Welcome to the EXP group discussion of SEMA paper P1. Um, last time we were talking about investment appraisal techniques and we want to uh, carry forward that sort of thinking in the context of relevant cash flows. Now when we evaluate projects uh, we need to look at cash flows and make projections based on the criteria of relevance. In other words, if we're going to make a, dis, uh, a determination as to whether an investment spend is worth it or not, we have to keep our eyes fixed on cash flows which are taking place in the future and which meet the test of relevance. What are not relevant, perhaps it's uh, easier to, uh, to define it uh, in, in the negative, by saying the cash flows which are going to occur anyway, whether or not our project uh, goes ahead, are considered to be irrelevant or not relevant. For example, some costs, if we've done a marketing study, for example, for a given project, although we would like to recover the costs of that marketing study, the point is that once the money has been paid for that marketing study, it is essentially a sunk cost and therefore whether we paid $1 million or $100,000, that's not going to enter into the calculation of whether we should embark on the project uh, itself. Committed costs similarly are not relevant as are allocated costs, usually in the form of overhead costs coming from other parts of the company and of course non-cash expenses by virtue of not being cash at all. Good example of non-cash expense is depreciation. Now in uh, testing uh, investment uh, acceptability from a financial point of view, the internal rate of return is a uh, discounting method where we seek to operate on a set of cash flows relative to the investment amount and determine at what discount rate R, remember we've talked about the R previously, at what discount rate R will the present value of the future cash flows exactly equal the initial investment amount? In other words, when is the, at what discount rate is the NPV going to be equal to zero? That's kind of a, a break-even uh, return or rate. And at that break, so-called break-even rate, the R, the discount rate determined, is by definition our internal rate of return. Here's a numerical example. If we have at time zero an investment amount of $20,000, and in year one we have a return of 5,000 cash flow, and year two 30,000, the candidate can confirm through the process of discounting that the IRR of these cash flows is 35.61%. In other words, the investment amount 20,000 will be equal to the cash flows discounted at 35.61%. In other words, that would be 5,000 in year one divided by 1.3561 plus 30,000 in year two, divided by 1.3561 squared. We can leave it to the candidate to confirm that this is in fact correct. Now the interesting thing is the comparison of the uh, net present value and the IRR methods. Let's just look at this um, in terms of some examples which are quite interesting. Um, Notice the ambiguity that can arise if we have a simple cash flow of uh, project A, investing 5000 and getting 6000 back, that gives us an IRR rate of 20%. If the discount rate for the project representing the riskiness of the future cash flows were um, 10%, then our net present value for the project would be $454. How does that compare with Project B? Well, Project B 
has different set of cash flows, which give us an IRR of 18%, which is lower than the IRR of A, but the net present value of B is higher than project A. So here we have ambiguity and which project should therefore be preferable. We're one to use the IRR rule. A looks better if one uses the NPV rule. B looks better. Um, the resolution of this problem is normally explained or, or uh, determined by saying always go for the highest or higher NPV outcome and disregard effectively the IRR. And the reason being that the NPV gives us a dollar or monetary outcome, which is what we want to maximize rather than the percentage return outcome as reflected in the IRR result. Uh, interestingly, if one in the case just presented, one were to specify a higher discount rate of 16%, then in that case, operating on the numbers, the NPV would also uh, prefer uh, project A. Now, this rather than let this just uh, dissolve into a numbers game, um, it's, it's good for the candidate to be to, to appreciate how these numbers are working. One might look at these, this comparison and say, aha, uh -huh, but these are different investment amounts and therefore I would expect somehow the results to be not strictly comparable. We'll have a look at the next example where we have $500 invested at year zero for both projects A and B, but we have different cash flow patterns over years one and two. In this case, we could also construct a, an ambiguous outcome. IRR is higher for B, whereas at a discount rate of 9%, the NPV for A is higher than that for B. But again, to resolve this uh, decisively, the NPV method should be preferable to the IRR method in determining which project is worth doing.